Skirtnismál. Here we have the ritual. How it can be performed by kids at any good event. This Edda poem is ancient, might have changed during the centuries, but yet it is here for us, priceless spiritual heritage we own. We can perform the ritual, for example, at Yuletide, but as you know, the ancient Yule is winter solstice, the shortest day of the year. Then the sun dies, and then she resurrects. Days start to grow longer, and that is the birth of light in the world. But there is also another resurrection, another birth of light in life. That is the dawn of enlightenment. Enlightenment is the goal and purpose of human lifespans. We are not told, not taught in schools, nor at home. Why? Why are we not taught this fundamental reason for our existence? Because teachers and mom and dad and grandpa and grandma simply do not know. No wonder, as no one told them. Lord Freyr, a god of prosperity and peace, goes to Hlidskjálf, from where he can see over all worlds. He wants us to have material abundance, but he knows it's not enough. He is going to tell us that one thing is necessary, that is to know how to live pure consciousness, the purifying. Freyr sees Gerdur, that is mankind, beautiful mankind, the shining jewel of earth. Gerdur has material abundance, her father Gimir is rich, she even has maids, but she lives in ignorance, oh Svinna. Gerdur has no idea about what lifespans on earth are for, no wonder nobody ever told her. Lord Freyr is sad because mankind doesn't have any notion about what human lifespans are for. Freyr goes to his chambers and sits down there, not uttering a word. Skadi, our determined first maiden, encounters Frey's sadness and worries. She and Njörður decide to have Skirnir talk to him. Njörður could be our origin in the sea. We are creatures of the oceans. We live in our body, which is a great thing because only in life, as a living human being, can each man evolve spiritually towards our perfection. This marriage, Skade and Njörður, in us is a difficult one. We are here in our body and our spirit seeks the highest. Skade does not like the seagull's laughter. Murder gets bored on snowy mountains. This is our inner conflict and dilemma, which we must solve. Skade and Murder in us make a compromise, because both has to be. When Skadi has seen Frey so sad and lonesome, she tells Njörður that his son has to be attended to. They do not really know how to address the issue, so they go to Skirnir, Frey's friend and servant, since time immemorial. We begin the ritual by introducing Bigvir and Bela. You should know that every name has a deep meaning in myths and in sacred poems. Names tell us a lot about the message they convey to us. They are meaningful names. Bigvir and Bela are Lord Frey's servants. Bigvir grows the barley. Bela is the dough netting girl and she bakes the bread. 
Frey is the god of prosperity, food, fertility, bounty. Gudlin Bursti, the golden maned hog, is divine providence for food and abundance. Prosperity brings peace among men on earth. Now you understand of what service Bikvir and Bela are to prosperity and peace, why they are Frey's servants. But we only have to stop craving for more and more, and find the Prati Ahara, the nourishment from within, that we gain when we meet up in Lokfara Lundur Barri. We should understand that this happens within us, not out there, but in here. Material wealth does not bind us. Wealth is a great blessing. Our ignorance binds us. Ignorance is lack of seeing who we are in essence and the purpose of life. We have to batter these trolls of ignorance. We can make beautiful music here. My suggestion is in the script. Uh, we do not have an ancient singing and dancing tradition in Eastland. It presumably was there once upon a time, but is lost. Why? Due to the brutal destruction of it during the Dark Ages. We were not allowed to dance, not even allowed to admire the beauty of nature. Musical instruments were destroyed as devilish. That the devil thing doesn't exist in heathenry. So we simply have to make some beautiful songs, music, dance, now, for our ritual. We try to make it look somehow traditional. Freyr accents to Hlith Skjalf. From here he sees over all worlds. But now we have to understand that the whole ritual takes place within ourselves, not out there, but in here. There is nothing but unstable flickering gungnir, out of which we make our worlds. All takes place within us. What catches Frey's eyes is Gerður, the beautiful one in Gimir's Garðar. We have to know that Gerður is mankind on earth, owning abundance of material goods, but unfortunately not caring about her divine part. She is bound by that ignorance of not knowing why, what for, she has decided to be born. She doesn't even know that she chose to be born. Man, mankind on earth, is Freyr's Brisingamen, the shining jewel on earth. Freyr sees that Gerður's arms bear that glow of inner divinity. Freyr is happy to see that she enjoys abundance, has everything needed, and even more. But what makes him sad, on the other hand, is to see her complete lack of knowledge about the purpose and goal of a human lifespan. We shall compose beautiful dance and songs to show how Gerður and her maids enjoy life with their material abundance. Even if we here perform the visible surface of the poem, we shall understand the allegory hidden inside the ritual. Teachers and parents shall have to learn TM, Transcendental Meditation, so they can understand what Skirtnismál is conveying to us. They cannot instruct us if they have no ground for understanding. Words and thoughts about it are not enough. We have to experience the state of transcendence. Personifications are a dangerous trap, as we fall into seeing personified powers and phenomena as guys and dolls, the people. Hitherto, we have not been taught to see the hidden message. Us teachers are illiterate on allegory and symbolic language in myths and poems. Gerður has maids, and her father, Gimir, is rich. This material bounty seems to be all Gerður cares about. Do we all only live a life like that? And do we foster a hidden feeling about wanting or needing some more stuff? An old joke goes, the difference between little boys and grown-up men is the price of their toys. And the newer one goes, he who has the most of stuff and gear in the garage when he dies, he wins. Freyr is sad. We know why. Gerður is not using her lifespans on earth for any spiritual evolution. Freyr goes to his chambers sits down there unable to utter a word about his worries over mankind. Skavi, a first maiden, the bride bride of the gods, now sees that something is bothering Freyr. Skavi is a determined first maiden. When Skavi has seen Freyr so sad and lonesome, she tells Njörður that his son has to be attended to. 
they do not really know how to address the issue, so they go to Skirtnir, Frey's friend and servant, since time immemorial. Skirtner is not too keen at all to try to talk to Freyr when he is in this mood. But as we know, Skadi, being a female power in a Norse myth, is not so easily hushed down and disregarded. She persuades Skirtner to go and find out what bothers Freyr. Skirtner succumbs. But it's not an easy task to get Freyr to speak up and tell what's bothering him. In the end, Freyr utters, still in a sad mood, the trouble with Gerdus' stagnation on her spiritual evolutionary path. Now, Skirtner will be going to gather mankind on behalf of Freyr. Skirtner gets Freyr's sword, a good one as it fights alone if a wise one holds it. Skirtner is also to give Gerdur eleven all-gilded apples from Freyr and endow her with the precious golden ring Drupnir. Do you remember that Adam and Eve got out of the fence of animal state, the paradise fence, by biting on an apple? Gerður is also about to get out of the base state of Gimiskarvar, a kind of animal paradise devoid of the right and wrong knowing, which is our precious human attribute. We can reason and take decisions after contemplating circumstances, possibilities, and effects of action taken. Animals only act and react by their inherent nature. We own our highly evolved nervous system, which allows for our ability to transcend the realm of thought and feelings, to transcend and be pure consciousness only. That is finding the bridge be first, which leads to higher states of consciousness. Skirtnir lets Frey's horse, but horse is the power to go. The sword is the will to go. Divine power, divine will. So Skirtnir, the divine ray, is bound to have success in his divine errand, which is in favor of furthering evolution. We shall be literate on symbolic language and allegory. Believe in the latter and fundamentalism is not fit for thinking men. Off he rides, passing snowy mountains. We make the sound of hooves hitting ground and frozen mountains. We, of course, stop the sound of hooves when Skirtnir stops his horse. Skirtnir asks Gimis Shepherd how he can find Gerdur. He answers, Either thou art fey or dead, no one can ride the luring blaze. Vavur but Skirtnir claims to have a long life and disregards this dissuading comment. Gimis fears the dog's bark at Skirtnir, who shows no discourage writing on him. We have two kids move the Vafur Loye, Aiken Fur, luringly. And as all words tremble while Skirtnir writes the blazing fire, we have to tramp with our feet or otherwise make awful noise as all earth trembles. When Skirtnir succeeds, we utter a sigh of admiration and relief. Gerður now, to her great surprise, sees that someone has accomplished in surmounting the impossible to reach her abode. She tells her mates to invite him in, even if she is not too secure about it. Who is he, this beautiful creature? He is not an elf, not a god, so what is he? Gallantly now Skirtnir offers Gerður the eleven golden apples and the ring Drupnir with regards from Lord Freyr. Lord Freyr wants to let thee find thy innermost divine self, my lady. But alas, we are in the middle of a Norse myth. Gerður does not say, thank thee, God. 
No, she flatly turns this down. No thanks, do not want the vanaguth, nor his gifts. I have lots of gold here in my father's gardens. The patriarchy had not yet been imported to the north. Not yet had that been threat imposed upon us when the poem Skirtnismal was chanted. Female theologians claim the patriarchy to be a cardinal sin and the root of all evil. Their god is a she. This blunt no thanks was perhaps not exactly what Skirtnis was prepared for. She is happy in her ignorance, of which she does not perceive. But Skirtnir cannot let Freyr down. He takes to threaten Gerda with his sword. But she stubbornly points out that he can fight with her father, who probably will kill him. She is not interested in these fighting hobbies. Luckily, Skirtnir has his gambante magic wand. He decides to allow Gerda to see what awaits those who do not use their lifespans to evolve towards perfection. The rules of poetry, Bragar Hauchtur, of the poem now changes to Galdralag, magic meter, and we make it feel very special by producing some luring sounds. Listen to my jar lids, the ones that make sounds. When we all do that, the charm starts to have effects. All is as frozen in Gimiskarðar. Gerður and her mates stand there without a movement. From all corners now, Rímþursar appear and slowly and spookingly approach and come ever closer to Gerður, then circling her. I have to show you my favorite Rímþurs. I simply hope that the small kids do not become frightened. So you all try to be tough big kids now. When Gerdu realizes what awaits us when we do not use our lifespans for our spiritual evolution, Skirtnir offers to undo the Galdr magic. Things now get back to normal. Gerdu and her mates can now move naturally again. Gerdu asks her mates to bring a rhine crystal chalice of mid, rim kalkur, for Skirtnir, which they do. We should understand the true message of the Edda poem Skirtnismal, even if we show only the surface, the superficial values. They should be viewed as a cue, an indication to what we are learning here. Teachers and parents have to learn to understand the allegory and the hidden message, not see only the surface acting. They should learn the easy technique to transcend the realm of thoughts, live pure consciousness. Now listen. Gerður suggests Lokvara Lundurbarri, the state of Nirvana. Did Gerður know all the time that there is more to life than waking and sleeping, along with dreams? Does she know about the fourth state, the act of transcending? Do we all know, after all, that we are looking for happiness, which is not in stuff, but inside, in our pure consciousness? What mind is looking for, and does not find in stuff, is Glaðheimar, the widest and gladdest swear of mind, and the least excited state finding the origin of thought. We know when we are awake, we work, go to school, have fun, then, on getting tired, we go to sleep. Dreams are the means to release the stress. When we have slept, we wake up and start activity anew. The transcendental state is what Buddha calls Nirvana, or is called the fourth state. The grand state of mind, the origin of thought, this is the bridge, Bef Rust. The fourth state, not the waking deep sleep, dreaming, but wide awake, living pure consciousness only, being aware of consciousness, pure consciousness only. The technique to transcend has to be learned and applied correctly. TM, Transcendental Meditation, is backed up by hundreds of scientific research. Some of them EEG showing correlated and synchronized brain waves during transcending. Fun to see that on our own brain measurements. Here we access our built-in faculty to rid ourselves of stress. Stress is unnatural and should be let evaporate. 
Ignorance is a trull. We do not see them, and they should not be. Stress clears off automatically in the state of Lokpara Lundurbarri, transcendence. The real philosophers knew the term know thyself, in Greek gnothi seauton. Unfortunately, nowadays philosophers cherish contentious art and all worldly discussions, not the real core of all philosophy, to live ourself. Transcending is not contemplation, not concentration. We shall use the technique that leads to transcending, not the ones which only tire and strain the mind and strain the nervous system. The results can be measured. Our forefathers tell us how to gain fimbulrunir, the skill in action. The skills to walk on water and to still high seas, among other handy skills in daily life of man. These are our inherent natural abilities, easily accessed. Our forefathers brought peace to lands in which they stayed, and they knew the art of creating friendship and peace among fighting kings. Please refer to the Maharishi effects from group transcending, scientifically verified. We also know that schools using TM, Transcendental Meditation, are problem-free schools, where the students blossom in inner happiness and soak up all knowledge from within consciousness. Now, why would our forefathers be telling us? Why are their poems and myths still here with us? Are they about the eternal truth? Yes, the purpose of its our lifespan is to evolve to perfection. If we do not, then we are wasting a precious lifespan in stagnation. We tend to live in thoughts and feelings, work and have fun, then fall asleep, live in the all-worldly belief realm without contact to our innermost glad heimar. If we do not transcend, we wither away and waste a lifespan in stagnation. We have to gain nourishment from within. That is prati ahara, nourishment from within a much misunderstood term. And how does this work? When we have been doing something all day, we get tired and go to sleep. This is necessary to give rest to the physiology. In dream state of sleep, the releases of deep-rooted stress is going on. Deep-rooted stress in the physiology gets released in the dreaming state. Deprived of REM sleep, rapid eye movements is seen under the eyelids during dreaming, we get neurotic. But these relevant states, a cycle from one to the other, is not enough in life. As necessary as sleep and dream, sleep is for rest for the physiology. So is transcending necessary to release deep-rooted stress in the nervous system. Being pure, having a pure nervous system, is the prerequisite for enlightenment. Do you see the sequence? By transcending, we reach the state of pure consciousness where nothing can hinder the release of stresses which have accumulated in our physiology. This is a most natural inbuilt process. Stress has no right to be, and life automatically gets rid of all such trottle, impurities and ignorance in our nervous system. We call the state of pure consciousness transcendental, as we do not see it with our eyes, do not see it to be our true nature, our transcendental self. We know only waking, deep sleep and dream sleep. But when we become acquainted with pure consciousness, it need not be called transcendental any longer. It is our true nature purely and exclusively, our very consciousness. We now know ourselves. This is the purpose and goal of human life. We shall learn that waking state, deep sleep plus dream sleep, is a vicious cycle when we live in ignorance. Bifrost is the bridge, that is to Nisa Neyur, that is transcend, or go to Lokvara Lundur Barri. This is the fourth state, the transcendence, pending on Vinka Medur. And a bridge to what? It's the only way to reach Gladheimar, Ausgarder, and Valak, full of life.